In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make the Clay's Choice Quilt Block. Now, it's part of my Mystery Block of the Month series, and if you don't know what that is, I'll put a link down below and you can check it out. To make our block, we need to make half square triangles, and we'll be using the four at a time method. So let's go. To make our Clay's Choice Quilt Block, you're going to need four different fabrics, and I've got the image here with the legend telling you exactly how to cut the fabrics. For example, for our A piece, we need to cut one at five and a half inches by five and a half inches. And for the B pieces, which are in the four corners here, four pieces at three and a half inches by three and a half inches and so on. You can find a copy of this over on my website. I'll put a link down below so you know exactly how to cut the fabric. Now to make the Clay's Choice quilt block, we're going to need half square triangles. And to do that, we're going to use the technique where we make four at a time. So let's get started. So to start off with, I've got one of my E pieces and my F piece that measured five and a half inches by five and a half inches. And then we're just going to face them right sides together, line up all four edges. And then when we're happy, I'm going to pop some pins in. Now what we're going to do is sew around all four sides. So I just like to pop the pins in on the corners like that because then they don't get in the way. And just make sure all the edges are lined up nicely when we're pinning. And now we're going to sew around all four sides. So I'm stitching at stitch length two. I'm using my scant quarter inch foot and I'm gonna start right off the very edge and sew right down to the very bottom. I'm gonna come right off the edge, lift my foot up. And then what I'm gonna do is just pull it a little bit so I've got a bit of wiggle room. And then I'm gonna start right on that edge again. So instead of coming down and then guessing at about quarter of an inch and turning, I'm sewing right off the edge and then I'll start again on this edge, which means we'll get perfect quarter inch seam allowances on both sides. If we try and guess and turn, it's not always accurate. I think this is the most accurate way of doing it. Again, coming right off the edge, lifting my foot up, turning it and starting on that edge again. And one more side. Okay, trimming my, well, cutting my thread, removing those pins, and now let's cut it. So now we're going to cut it into four pieces. We're going to cut it from corner to corner on both sides. So I'll take my ruler and what I'm going to do is line it up where the stitches meet or intersect at the top here and at the bottom. So I'm just going to make sure that's all lined up nicely. Take my cutter and cut it in half. And then what I'm going to do is just turn it around and do exactly the same. So I'm just going to make sure it's all still lined up how it was. And then again, come and put my ruler in the middle of that intersection there at the top and at the bottom. Oh, I've just missed a few threads there. Okay, let's press. For all four pieces, we'll set the stitches in which, like the name suggests, it sets the stitches into the fabric and just helps them lay flatter. Then I'm going to open it up and press towards the darker side. I'll give it a finger press so we don't have any creases in there. And then press. And then I'll repeat that for all four pieces. So now we need to square up all four pieces at three and a half inches by three and a half inches squared. And I just happen to have a ruler that's three and a half inches. So all I need to do is place this line on top of my seam. And then I just need to make sure that the ruler is fitting within our piece here. For example, we don't want it down to the side here because then we'd be missing a bit off the side and the bottom. So just making sure it fits in there. And then we're going to trim all four sides. 
I'm just going to turn my mat. If you have a rotating mat, this is this that would be perfect to use right now. And just checking it hasn't moved. I just noticed it did just move slightly in that last turn. So just checking. And there we have our three and a half inch piece. So if you don't have a three and a half inch squared ruler, you can just take a regular ruler and find that diagonal line again and pop it on your seam. Now mine just happens to measure three and a half inches wide again, but if it doesn't, we're just going to trim off one side and then trim off the second side at three and a half inches. Just make sure you do check your measurements so it will fit in and you're not accidentally trimming off too much on one side so you won't be able to get your three and a half on the other. Just turn that around and do exactly the same on the other side. This time lining up the cut edge right on the edge there and then cutting at three and a half inches because my ruler is three and a half inches. Then we're doing the other two sides, so I'm just using the diagonal line going in the other direction. This is a little bit fiddlier than using the three and a half inch ruler. I'm just trying to get that right on my seam. Okay, and when I'm happy, cutting the excess turning it around and doing exactly the same on the other side. Okay, so whichever ruler you've got, just repeat that so that all four pieces are squared off at three and a half inches by three and a half inches. So get your remaining two pieces that measure five and a half inches by five and a half inches, which are your A and E pieces, and do exactly the same. So in total, it will end up with eight half square triangles. So I've got all my pieces ready and now what I'm going to do is take a look at my image and place all my pieces so that they're in the correct position using my image to help me. So I'll take my B pieces and place them in all four corners. And so on. So there we go, they're all in the right position. Now do just take a moment to double check it is all sitting correctly. Um, you can see that the E pieces are creating one piece now, like a star. That's a good way to check that they're looking correct. You might also want to check that if you're using directional fabric, it's facing up the right way. Um, and one thing to note was both of these fabrics here were directional fabrics, so I purposely placed them facing in opposite directions. I thought that would be the nicest way to have them. So once they're like this, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to sew each of our columns together and then we'll press. So just something to be careful of when you are sewing your columns together. I've got two half square triangles here and what I'm going to do is just nest them together. So I'm opening that up and pushing them up together so that they're going to be nice and nested when they're sewn together. So then just lining up all those edges and just sewing as usual. So I've sewn my columns together and I've put them in the correct order again. If you need to, you could refer back to image just to double check. Now we're going to nest our seams when we sew our columns together. And to do that, we need to make sure we press one lot of seams down, the others up, down, and then up. So I'll start with these ones. I'll set the stitches. And then I'm going to make sure they're pressed up. Finger pressing, we don't want any creases in here. And then I'll do the same for these, remembering these ones will then come down, up and down. So now we're going to sew our columns together. Now make sure again that they are in the right position. I'm going to sew these two first. I'm going to place them right sides together and then pick it up from the center here and nest those seams. So I've got one set of seams folded and going this way, the other folded and going that way. I'm just going to push them up against each other 
or butt them up against each other. I'm going to open it up to see if it's looking correct. I'll be getting a nice straight line. And then when I'm happy, I'll pop a pin in. Then I'll come along and find the next lot of seams and do exactly the same. And I've got one more here. If you'd like to, you could just pop a pin in just to keep these last, this last corner nice and straight, lining up the edges along the top and the side, and at the beginning. Then I'm going to fold these two together, right sides together, and pin, and then I'll sew, and then I'll open them up, and then sew that last center seam together. So now we're just going to set our stitches. And then you can press the seams however you'd like. I'm going to press mine all to my right. I'm just going to give it a finger press, make sure they're all sitting nicely. It is a little bit bulky under there. I know some people when they are getting a bit bulky like to press them open and that's just a personal preference. Okay, I'm going to give it a once over. And there we have our Clay's Choice quilt block, isn't that cute? So there we have the Clay's Toys quilt block. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please do hit the like button. It really helps me out. One thing to note is that when we're cutting those half square triangles on the diagonal, we're cutting them on the bias, which makes our fabric very fragile. So do handle them with care. One thing you can do to help with that is spray them with a little bit of starch, which makes it a bit more sturdy. If you've enjoyed this video, you might like to check out last month's mystery block of the month where we did the sawtooth star block. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.